I'm Allie. I came out after 20 years of marriage, and I have three kids. I'm Melissa, and I have two kids, and I came out at 37 after an 11-year marriage. This podcast is about coming out later and the struggles and victories that come with it. When coming out feels like the end of the world, but it's really just the beginning. This is The Lesbian Chronicles. All right, well, welcome to The Lesbian Chronicles. Melissa, you and I have a date Friday night. We do, and I just found out, and I'm so excited. (laughs) Um, I'm so excited you're going. I literally thought I was going to have to show up there by myself and do the thing we talk about. Five seconds That's of so courage. That's so funny that you thought that I wasn't going because like I go to everything. <laughs> you go to everything, but I didn't think that you, I thought you were mentioning this as a public service, not as oh, not, like, not hey, that I'm, I'm going to be going. there. Yeah. We're talking um, about the low event, um, this Friday, uh, in Atlanta. Uh, I guess it'll, it will have already taken place, but we've yeah. mentioned on a couple of different podcasts. And maybe we'll but. post it too, but it's a professional event. Um, and it's right up my alley because it starts at six o'clock. Yes, I can be in early. a lift home by eight o'clock. Yes. And, and I'll um, just go to second Friday afterward. Yeah. There you go. Who knows? Maybe I'll have a couple drinks at the professional thing and I'll, uh, next thing you know, I'm out. I mean, that'd be amazing. Yeah. We have a really cool guest that I kind of want to, before we go into all that, I just, over the last couple of weeks, you and I, as just friends, have mentioned a few times that there is this, like, why is it that things have to move so quickly? And, like, why can't we reinvent that you don't have to live with your partner necessarily? You can live separately, as you did for a long time in your relationship. Mm -hmm. And all, and as we're having these conversations, I heard it from Dr. Jamie. I've heard it from in emails of just why is it that like women also don't seem to date around? It's like, there's no, it's like, you're not allowed to have two dates. If you're dating one woman, you're not allowed to have another date with another woman because that just makes you a horrible person. But like in the hetero world, everybody's dating dating all over the place, dating all over the place until you finally decide to have a conversation and then it gets serious. So this has been like heavy on our brains. And then we get this, this message from our guest and it just like hit me at the exact right time because she like worded it everything I've been thinking and you've been thinking Melissa in this perfect message so I'm like that there's our guest that we can yes. like have this topic which is we're starting a revolution today which is <laughs> there will be no more u-hauling no like, more u-hauling no more u-hauling mm. the research no more is urge in, to merge exactly the three of us have done the research <laughs> <laughs> it's not working <laughs> and so let's introduce heather heather welcome to lesbian chronicles hi thank you for having me what's kind of funny too is that um heather in her message was like why do things have to move so fast and then the next day we're like oh but will you come on the show like so fast. <laughs> like now. <laughs> like right now. Yeah. You're very, like, Wait a like I said, very lesbian of you. Very lesbian yes. of us. We move fast. Yeah. Exactly. But um, so you said you're in Philly. Yeah, what's, I'm in Philly. What's the gay vibe in Philly? Is it a gay you know city, what? not a gay city? Oh, it's a very gay city. Um, but I don't actually a lot of people I date are in New York for I don't know, just are for whatever reason. I date a lot of New Yorkers. Okay, like New York. I, I'm city? Out, I go way outside the zone. Yeah. How would you even meet so like is it because you're I guess the trains. On the apps. Yeah, <laughs> on and the, the apps train. that get your yeah. range. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I would date people in Philly. I just um, don't necessarily connect so much. Yeah, that's interesting. You know. On the train, how far is Philly to New York City? It's an hour and a half. Oh, it's not bad at all. You could. Yeah. And I'm up there a lot anyway for music and art and things like that. Right. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's um, let's kind of kick it off with kind of like set the stage for essentially the conversation is around what is this about like this desperate feeling like you meet someone you go out on a a date two dates three dates and all of a sudden it's like oh we've got to have the conversation about where this is going or like Mm. this urge to like move in together sometimes it's both people sometimes it's one person that just kind of like wants to like lock it down right away and um, I guess I'd be curious, both of you, Melissa, you can start. Like, what do you, why do you think people do that? Like, what is that? You know, I, over the last several months in the deep dive I've done um, within my, my myself and my own feelings, I've realized how much people are like, just scared to be alone. And yeah. I think once you meet someone that you click with, it's like, you want everything to fall into place immediately. So badly. 
so badly. Mm -hmm. You want it so bad that it's like all logic goes out the window. And on top of that, we have that heterosexual norm, the, the norm that we experienced in our twenties where that's, that was typical, like, or more so, I guess, of like, you're dating, you meet someone, you go, you probably date a little bit longer and the guy is the pacer, right? We've always pointed out, but it's like normal to be like, oh yeah, we've been together for a year. We should get engaged or, and move on, move in together. And we have that same perspective and it's just like there's way too many moving parts to be moving that quickly especially the second time around when you've been married now we already have families like what do you think about that heather yeah the second time around i'm like this is like a whole new it's like kind of like a whole new lease you know what i mean you get to do you get to make it your way you know like you don't have to follow the societal norms we've already kind of done a lot of the hard work we have anyway, in terms of coming out and why just follow those norms again, just with the same gender? Like, why not just, I don't know. I I find it on the first date. I find a lot of first dates are trying to really lock it down. And I'm like, whoa, (laughs) really? On the first date? (laughs) I swear, like I get these conversations like on the first date, like, well, where do you see this going? I'm like, I'm not sure. Like, can we we get dessert? Like, I don't know. Can we finish the the cheese fries? Like, why are we talking about this? And also, like, when these conversations come up, like, why can't we just enjoy each other's company and not talk about that? And then maybe evaluate that later if we really even like each other. You don't know that yet. I can't tell you where things are going right now. We just met, you know? I kind of like what you said in your message too, which is like, there's something that sounds kind of fun about like, you could have this life. I mean, it's kind of what Melissa was doing for a while. It's like, you can raise your children. I can go to work. I can work out. I can go do whatever I need to do, have dinner with friends. And then you've got this like girlfriend that you can be falling for, but then it's like the fun thing. It sounds so lovely. Like I'm going to look forward to seeing you on Saturday night. I might sleep over. Mm -hmm. I might not. I don't know. And then I'm going to go back to my taking care of my kids and my, it's not like you're duplicitous. It's more like, why couldn't that be the standard for two years before it's ever even a consideration? I know. I agree. Totally. Yeah. Like, I think, I, I don't know what the answer to, but like Melissa, even I think you felt like, I remember one time I said to you, you, you were still dating and you were kind of on the apps. And I think you had like two people you were kind of interested in. This is a while ago. And I remember you even feeling some guilt around like, ah, like, I don't know if I should be, like dating two oh, people. Yeah. Do you remember that? And I was like, that's mm-hmm. the most ridiculous That was a while ago. And I had just heard. met someone and then I was, I had another date scheduled yeah. for like that weekend. And I told the person that I just met, like, just to be transparent, I have another date. I'm not even sure you and had to. I felt the energy shift so hard that I ended up like canceling the other day. Ah. I, I was like, I don't want to like taint what is already going on here. Like this feels good. And we've met and we have, we like jive well in person. So. Right. Oh, I have a question. So did you tell the person you were dating or the person you had a date with? The person that I was dating that she I had just one, met. She had okay. just met her we, we had hung out like twice. Yeah. And... I had a similar situation. First, I, I went to, um, I was, I had a date planned with this woman um, in New York and I, I drove up and, uh, and I get there and then she's like, oh, just so you know, I'm dating someone else. I'm like, oh, okay. But like, it kind of shifted me a little. I'm like, wow, I could have known this beforehand a little right. bit. Just because, you know, the first date you're like, do I like this person? Do I want a second date? You know, and you're not, the whole evaluation switches a little bit. But I, I guess think. I'm yeah. more what curious to both of you, like, why are we telling anybody anything? It's like, I go look at how I mean, I could have just been too. like, I have other plans on Friday. Yeah, I don't know. I don't I was owe trying... you anything. Like, I don't right. owe you anything yet. So it's almost but like, even right. when I met Marina, like she was talking to a few different people and we hung out like two, maybe three times, like over the course of a weekend. It was very like, we spent a lot of time together that first weekend. And she immediately is telling these people like, mm, I'm not going to date you anymore. Cause I met someone like she wanted yeah. to pursue that. She didn't want to like tangle the web, you know? Yeah, and yeah. if you're so sure in that date that you are, completely smitten enough that you can't even enjoy the other date. I mean, have you met me? Yeah, you are pretty great. (laughs) Why do you think I asked you out Friday? (laughs) (laughs) Let me let the record straight. Melissa and I would never date in a thousand years. No. There could be no, no one left. Like That's been off the table from the get. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> um, 
But I guess I just feel like there's something, it's like looking at houses. It's like you're looking for shopping for the perfect house. I wouldn't go to one house, even if I really like the house. I'm going to kind of check the market. And then you see, like, I don't know, like not three dates is something, but like to show up on, you've gone on date one date. Date one. Mm-mm. And then tell, That's, that's yeah. a red flag to me. <laughs> right. Yeah. But we all kind of yeah. do it. So it's like, what is that? Is there like a patheticness of like, you're so scared the second time around. You got to lock it in. You got to lock it in. I think, I don't don't know if it's patheticness. Maybe it's just like, maybe people are terrified. Like, you know, you just made this big move, no matter what the big move was, whether you just, or you just divorced and came out, whatever it was. Um, People were really afraid. I I think to have that alone time, you know, where it's for me. I'm very much loving my alone time, extremely, to the point where you better be really special <laughs> to try to and come in and take it away. Right. <laughs> you know, that's funny because, Melissa, you sort of had, at the beginning, I think, were feeling, having feelings like, oh, shit, like, now I'm alone at my place. But then I think you kind of now sound like Heather. Yeah, like, it's taken like, me time yeah. to get there. But I think especially coming from a long-term marriage, you're so used to having someone around or a long-term marriage with kids also. Like you're used to having someone around, you're used to your house being busy. Like you, that emptiness, that empty house, the silence, all that stuff is, it's hard to sit in. And that's, I think why we're all like, we got to date. I got to get out. And dating's like the easiest way to make plans. Yeah. You know, like it's easier, especially if you don't have a friend group, I guess I should asterisk that if you don't have a friend group dating is the easiest way to like have plans and not be alone right and yeah. so it's not it's like we've kind of been talking about for years and years now it's it's not like there's really that successful of like friend app dating and building a community building that community takes a lot of work getting on a dating app zero work but do you ever get zero on the work. date but what happens like okay to heather's point now she showed up in new york city she's on this date and now like my personality would be i'm five minutes in i know i don't want to be here anymore and now i'm that's almost more lonely and now she wants to move in together well now yeah, she wants you know, to move in like I, I was still wanting to be there i was it was like that's that's so that's me though i'm like this is fine that's i'm like i'm happy she told me but like maybe you could have told me beforehand well, what know, would so that have changed kind of for a, you what would that have changed for you it wouldn't have changed anything i still would have went and went on the date because it's a good experience one way or another right. to me right you know i, I totally like, agree I, I kind of put it like i think of it like this when i'm 80 years old and I'm, you know, whatever, like all wrinkly and <laughs> can't do anything anymore. Like when I'm thinking back, yes, I'm going to think very fondly on that trip up to New York and that nice date I had. And it's an adventure and it was fun and it was, it was meaningful in the moment that it was, you right. know what I mean? Right. So even though, okay, we didn't even go on a second date, but it was, well, you know, it, we did the kind of two date, two day date thing. <laughs> but, right. Um, you know, the very lesbian thing to do but um you know it was it was a good experience all around yeah so right. so it was I, it. I just look at it like that yeah I would have went one way or another I just like it kind of put a weird spin on me like you told me in that moment as soon as I got there kind of like right away yeah it's almost like you're yeah. you're changing I see what you mean it's kind of like you know yeah you're excited been, to go well, on the date yeah I was excited yeah. one way or another like again I don't approach it like hey is this person gonna um you know, share my electric bill in a month. Like, I don't look at it like that. I just look at it like an experience. And if we like each other, we can hang out again, even if the long term isn't in the cards, even if we're not necessarily a match, but we get along can and we you, laugh and have fun. Like, could why you can't date we multiple that? women? Like, could you, how do you w- yeah, talk about that? I think so. I mean, I think so. I mean, summer's coming. No, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> And this is where I think, you know, the interview portion of when I go on dates, not like I'm on dates like every single day, Um, but as soon as people hear like, I do like my alone time and I'm not looking for anything serious. And I'm always like, I just want to hang out and have fun. And, you know, if it progresses, then it progresses. And I'm all for that, but I'm not looking necessarily for that at the moment. Yeah. But hey, if a lightning strike hits, I'm all for it. (laughs) <laughs> it's kind of like what Melissa no. said. Like you're just, it's like a, a fun plan for a Saturday night and it doesn't have yeah. to have any weight. But I mean, it can keep going on. It doesn't have to have any weight even in two or three weeks if we continue to hang out. Right. Or and yeah. text and flirt and all that's all fun. And that's all a good experience. 
I even totally if it's, agree. I think that's a great approach know, too. It's, and it allows you to like get to know the person a little bit better. Yeah, um, absolutely. It, it takes, takes the pressure, pressure off. off. Right. And could you, to your point, like you said, that could progress, but it still doesn't mean you have to move in together. It can progress till you're the only one I want to be with you forever, but I don't need to be with you in yeah. my house because I've got kids and I've got dogs and I've got work. This and is I- this is the thing that's like, I've, I'm thinking about a lot lately. Like, yeah. cause I think it's where like, for one, like the pressure to do this kind of stuff feels overwhelming on people. Like one person may really want that, but the other person may not. And they want to people please and do, you know, make their partner happy to end up moving in together. And it's just like, it's a lot to take on, especially when kids are involved. And Mm. it's what really keeps me from like, you know, I've said it before on the podcast. Like, I don't, I don't really like go for dating women with kids just because I don't like, what does that look like in the future? Like, Let the record show Melissa has kids. I have kids. I know. And I, and I agree. It's very hypocritical of me to say no, it hundred percent, but my whole thing is like, I don't have that big of a house like, Yeah, where if we move in together, where's everybody going to sleep? And like the pressure that it puts on your kids, especially when you're doing it like really quickly, like kids, they need to adjust. They've already gone through a divorce. They've they're coping with the fact that I'm gay and every day kind of like figuring out what that means to them. And I'm seeing that more and more. We could do a whole other episode on this of like how it's impacting my daughter as she's going into middle school. Like yeah. it's going to be ammo for some kids to use against her. Right. And I know that. So. And it like, is time away. Like I don't care who you are and this is no judgment because I did it. My partner moved in right away with her child. I don't care what anyone says. It is time away it is taking my most precious commodity which is my time away from them and giving it to someone else and now I'm doing it in their face in their home like I Mm -hmm. yes it can be a beautiful thing and yes we all you know we went through it and we added there's more value added but nobody can make me think otherwise like and really I think that the Mm -hmm. the only time that that kind of thing really makes a lot of sense is if there is some sort of financial pressure where the two of you as a couple are like, this is going to help us to, you know, give our kids the lives that they, they deserve, you know, maybe help them be in a better school district or play more sports, that kind of thing. Like, um, I totally get it in that respect, but if you're financially stable enough to, and can handle your own household, then why the rush, you know, why why bring all these other players into it? What if the answer to that is, Oh, we're so in love. We're, we, this is it. But like, don't we all kind of know that can change a little bit? Yeah, right. Yes. Like, you know? tell, tell Heather about the two years. The oh, astonishing. Wait. Like, I, I, I come from school of thought that, um, like, that's pretty serious. Like, that's more serious than, like, even moving into me. Like, that's more intimate than being intimate would be to meet someone's children. Right. Because this is other people. This is their kids. You know what right. I mean? I care more like, about them than I care about me. So it's like, I care more about yeah. meeting them. And it's not like, I don't want to meet your kids. It's just like, wow, that's really like. Well, it, there's, there's time. damage that can be done in this area, you know? Right. For me, I've held a lot of like anger towards some of my past partners because they have gotten close to my kids and then they're no longer present in their lives. Well, that's what I'm, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know what and I mean? Cause I need to make sure I like you enough. You know, and, and I had someone ask me to hang out with like her and her kids after like two dates. And I'm like, I don't even know this person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Barely, like a little bit. Like we text here and there. No, we weren't even like heavy texters or anything. I'm like, oh, it's a bit yeah. like, right off know, the bat. I, I do. I guess I, once it's happened, I think then it becomes like you have to explain to them that people are season. I mean, it's just like some people yeah. are just mm. seasons of a time. But I agree. Like I don't. Mm. I, and like I have a child, but my child's he's pretty grown and he's, I, I have almost like two legs are out of the nest. So all I have to do is jump. I got a few months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm pretty much, I'm almost an empty nester here. Oh, does he, but, how does he feel about you dating? Oh, he doesn't know I date. He doesn't know. Okay. See, oh. so not yet. That's now, I mean, yeah. it's not really business at the moment, you know, mm. how long or have you been out? It's not his business. I like yeah. that. I thought it's I, not I his agree. business right it's now. Not, yeah. How long have you I mean, been when out? There's, um, I don't know, about two years, maybe. Okay. I mean, officially two years, longer mm-hmm. than two years, but officially two years. 
So relatively fresh, really. Yeah. And it's, you know, his father and I co-parent um, really well together and he dates as well, but we, he doesn't even know. And he has more of a long-term situation, but he doesn't, um, he doesn't know either one of us. He's, we're just trying to co you know, keep the family, family. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I, you said that and, too um, in your message, like you have a family. It's like you don't feel this need to like all of a sudden create a new family. You you have a I don't, family. Yeah, no. And I'm also again maybe it's the empty nesting too. But like I'm also like I'm like a teenager. I'm like yeah, no, I I'm good. Like I want to I yeah. want to go out and have fun. Like can we go on fun dates and let's uh you know drive the jeep to the lake and hang out and do fun things. Like I don't necessarily want to jump right back into pizza on Friday night. Um. You know, predictability. Yeah, pretty, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think that's really important, like to, to have that freedom and just kind of do what you want right now, especially like if you've been married for a long time. You've had that like mm-hmm. predictable life. It feels good to have a little bit of like shake up there. And she said, yeah, like, yeah. you get this rewrite. It's like, be careful how you write it because you're going to be then have to live with Don't that write it script. too quickly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm still trying to figure out, you know, get my bearings, let alone introduce someone else at this point. Right. And then I think important too, to talk about, because we're just, none of us are professionals. We're just people having life experience, but two psychologists have said on our show that you don't know anything for 18 to 24 months. Like you're, there's still that hormone, that happy hormone that's basically flowing through your bloodstream for two years. You're in that honeymoon phase. So it's not Mm -hmm. real. It's not like she basically said, disregard everything that happens in the first two years, disregard all of it. Don't, don't, don't let that be the basis for any decision you make for the first two years. And then, and then start, start your data collection basically. And so I thought that was always like stuck with me. It's, it's been true. Like my relationship has, we're still together, but I will say like, we are not the same women that we were when we met at all. I'm and not you even, guys have been together for like four years now, like almost oh, wow. five, uh, five yeah. now. Five. So it's now, but if you were to look back at the two people that met five years ago and we did the whole thing, oh, we have to live together and blah, blah, blah. Like it's, we both say it was so dumb. And then here we are five years later, we're not even the same. Like I am a re- completely different. Melissa can attest. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not the same person anymore. And so it's not fair to her. It's not fair to me necessarily. Like we're here, but it's just like that. It creates such burden that it's like, why would you do that? If you have a choice. I mean, some people, I mean, again, everyone has their needs too. You know what I mean? And by all means, if that's what someone's needs are, that's what someone's needs are. I'm just saying like, we don't need to talk about it. Like over dinner on (laughs) our first meeting. Over the cheese fries. Um, over cheese fries. I'm trying to enjoy my cheese fries. And I do want to give credit. To, we do have some listeners that have made this work and they Me, right now. really yeah. quick. That's what I mean. Some right. people, yeah. Like, I mean, if it does work, lighting. but it also doesn't work. Well, and I think it, it also too, can be damaging. It's just good to know that there's other perspectives. I think we've all been in. I please understand. I'm in my relationship. It did work. It's just yeah. we both say like there was no looking back with the 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 hindsight view now that we're out of it is like wow that was crazy that like, was wild what are we doing like that was crazy so to me it's like right. I don't know like we have this other perspective it's kind of like the adult in the room telling you why if you don't have to rush why wouldn't you just get all the re- re- the information and then still do it then still put right. them together And I think also like the reason why I am kind of harping on this lately is because it's like, I realized how many standards I've kind of put on myself and on my relationships and trying to meet the things that other people have been doing around me and coming out later, you know, they are meeting their person right away and they are coming together and making these really beautiful families together, merging their families. And that's amazing. And I've, I thought I wanted it, but it hasn't happened. And now I'm kind of like, well, what, what? Mm, do I want that? And having that pressure, is that making it so that it's not happening for me? It's interesting. I, I thought I wanted that too in the beginning, but now like two years in, again, I'm just really loving my alone time. Right. <laughs> Where I would like to just be here like this and then, yeah, someone come over and hang out and, you know, uh, like um, steady someone, not, you know, different people in and out of my door every two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> and if there was a steady someone, yes, I would introduce my son to them, but you know, until there's someone I, I won't. 
What would your rebuttal, both of you, be to, what about the feeling of, like, I want this, like, thing that I'm really, like, I I don't want to serially date, or I don't want to, because I need this person to, like, fully know me, or I've got this safe space of a partner that's, like, my person, and if shit hits the fan, or if I'm having this bad day, I'm making this up, but, like, something awful happens, I've got this person, what would you but why say? can't that be the person that you're seeing that like, you know, exactly. I still would like that someone yeah. to go to. They're like, oh, my gosh, work was like so terrible today. Yeah. And you talk about that. But why can't that be the person that you. They're, that's still the person. They just don't live in your home. Yeah. Yeah. They just it. don't live in your home right now. Right. You like, know, and I think not it's important that they to won't know- ever. Yeah. Either, yeah. You know, and it's important that your partner doesn't fulfill that need a hundred percent. So true. God, Melissa, say more like, on that. You need to have a friend that you can reach out and say like, oh yeah, today sucked. You know, like have multiple friends where you can say that's too. Yeah. So it's not all your partner. Your partner, partner might've had a bad day too. And they don't have the bandwidth to listen to you, bitch, you know? Right. Yeah. I or think, I think, I, I think I've really learned, like I've just, this whole, this whole process in general over the past like four years. Um, I've just learned like so much about myself, but I think I've really learned that I don't necessarily want someone to complete my life. I, I do want someone to like accentuate it and brighten it and make it better. You know what I mean? Right. And also mm-hmm. like yeah. about like the romance, like sometimes, you know, like disputes over money or whatever, like just the regular minutia of household living, like is a romance killer for sure. You know, right. like absolutely so i'm not really you know just kind of got out of that a little bit ago i'm not looking to get back in, back into yeah it. there's like there's a yeah. resentment that builds when your partner's not pulling the same weight in the house oh, yeah. or maybe like they you know refuse to i don't know clean the toilets like they're i don't do bathrooms that kind of mentality and it's like left yeah. on the other person to do it like that's gonna create yeah. a rift there but even for the opposite yeah. side of that because this happens with us sometimes is like it's not there's another side to that too which is I also don't want to feel the pressure of, and we've gotten through this, but this was a battle in the beginning. Like if my teenagers leave a dish in the sink or dishes in the sink occasionally, to me, it's like, I don't want to always be worried. Did Tatum do this? Did Owen make his bed? Did the dogs barking? I got to jump off the couch (laughs) and get the dog in because it's annoying Mm -hmm. you. Like, I don't want the pressure also of the constant management that's required to live with someone there's a battle we've we've gotten to a place of understanding but I think that was a battle it was you know and so I think there's like something special too about like you don't live together and it like you're making plans you're yeah you know you're you're flirting you're texting all week long and you can't wait to see them yeah instead of like like, oh, God, when I get home, is she going to have the floor swept? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Has the dog been fed? Right. Do I have to do these things? And right. then you're like, oh, my God, I can't wait. You know, let's make dinner. Yeah. Let's have wine. Let's God, it's so true. Yeah, no, you're right. Like, as I'm driving home every day, I'm thinking, I wonder if the dogs have been fed. Or who's making the <laughs> coffee tonight? Did she make the coffee? Like, if I lift it and see the coffee in there, I'm like, yes. Thank you, Jesus, oh, for small favors. <laughs> It is. It 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 does suck. Like uh, having lived in this house now a year and a half, it sucks to take care of a whole house by yourself. There's the other you know? side. Right? Like it really does. There's right. a. I don't have the means for a cleaning lady. I would love that. My yard costs a lot. We've already talked about that. I spent all weekend out working on my yard, and it would be nice to have someone here that could like kind of share that burden. Right. But mm-hmm. but. But like, do I need to put pressure on a relationship for, to, so that I don't have as many household chores? No. And like, it's like, it doesn't kind of what we talked about. And I know I thought that was so funny that Heather was like, I never even thought about the finance part, but to me, the finance part is the opposite of that. It's like, you're giving up. Yeah. You could split the cleaning lady and the whatever, but it's like, at the also, I don't, then you're splitting the upside of the overage when you go to sell the house it's like i don't maybe if you own a home together like you're giving up a lot of investment mm. in your let me correct what i said too i don't mean cleaning lady i mean cleaning person, cleaning person i know yeah, cleaning person yep like, actually mine is a man. mine is a man yeah yep oh wow yep. one of my friends has a cleaning company and and she has a lot of men on her yeah. team mine's so. one mm. man 
He loves to clean. I got to say, he's really buffed. I hate cleaning. I'm over it right now. That's for sure. (laughs) Likewise. Likewise. I don't think I'm that good at it either. No? Like I do it, but it's like it never looks like, and I use the same thing. Like I do it. It never (laughs) looks the same as they do. I don't know. I like it. I don't, I don't mind it at all. Yeah. I guess in that case, you know that it's done correctly if you do it yourself. Yeah. 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 So I mean, I mean, I'm not like looking forward to it, but I do have my routine. I do it. Yeah. It's easier. And again, it's it's easy when it's just one person. (laughs) Right. And I guess there are pros and cons. There are obviously going to be pros and cons, but I think the main Mm -hmm. takeaway from this, this, um, episode is basically it doesn't have to be this way like you don't have to there's a reason there's a stereotype and the reason is is because it's real and melissa and i know this because we have a thousand lesbian friends and we hear from everyone they're all doing it they're all doing it and it's not always working no i you know i'd say a lot of the time it's not working and yeah i just want people to like kind of realize that there's other avenues out there we don't have to move in immediately we don't have to you know move so quickly in dating. You don't have to move quickly in coming out, all that stuff. Right. Like, just pump the brakes. Pump the brakes. Yeah, and... like, I just want to have fun. I mean, I don't know why that's. Why is and that if bad? you're looking yeah. for a good time, call <laughs> Heather. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I can't just have fun. <laughs> I I thought, Heather, probably, you probably are I a blast of a date. Serious. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I totally yeah, I'm an amazing I'm, date. I can yeah. tell. I bet you'd be fun. You bring it. I, I do this thing I now where I like with Maria, I'll, she, it drives her crazy. Cause I, I can tell you're a great conversationalist and I bet at dinner, like you would be a great, there'd be good banter, but, um, mm-hmm. you get kind of lazy and, and like, I notice like when we're out, I sometimes will feel like I'm like carrying it. And so finally I told her I'm doing this mm. new thing where I just say nothing. And like, I might throw out one time <laughs> and see what happens and then I'm out. And then I can tell she's so used to me carrying it. <laughs> it's a joke. I mean, we're joking, but with each right, other, right. but it's like, it will get quiet and she'll be like, what's going on? I'm like, what's going on is that I'm not doing oh. it anymore. I'm not heavy back lifting. Hurts <laughs> from exactly. carrying this conversation. Um, <laughs> anyway, so that's, it's true. But I love what you said also about you do get this chance to rewrite it. You already did the hard thing. Yeah, you already have this one life. Like, I don't know, look around a little, you know? Yeah. Why jump right in? Why jump right in? <laughs> I am all for a lightning strike. If, if you know, Cupid... Excuse Heather's going to email us in like three days. I'm fine. I know, I know. In. You're like, I met <laughs> someone, guys. <laughs> the are going to open. <laughs> we had a 48 hour date. <laughs> yeah, that happened. Together. I like yeah. how both of you, yeah. both of you did this in this interview where you both had clearly a couple dates over the period of like 24 hours and you're calling them multiple dates. <laughs> I know, Heather right? Called it two dates. I mean, Melissa said we had three dates in two days. If it's two dates, yeah. <laughs> Seriously, over the course of that weekend that Marina and I met, we had one actual date, and it was just having drinks, and then we just hung out the rest of the weekend. And I call it like three, three dates. dates. <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah. So, like the one lady, it was like two dates, but it really wasn't. It was one. <laughs> It's but it felt day. like two. It's one day. If you go to sleep, I guess you get to count it as a new date. Right, yeah. exactly. Right? That's fair. A new day. New That's day. That's fair. That's fair. Um, okay, last Do question. Whatever. Are you on our website yet? Have you gotten on our website yet? I, I think I am, but I don't really, I don't, um, I'm not, I, I am on it. Okay. <laughs> did you join I'm any of the states? I'm on it, but I'm on it. Did you join your state? I did. I oh, did my state in New York. Oh, good. Okay, oh, good. nice. This. I love this. Okay, lesbianchroniclespodcast.com. And then, Heather, write. I like the, can you, I would love for you to write about the revolution. Let's get people talking. Okay. Because All this right. is a thing. Well, I don't even, yeah, I'll have to look around. I, I, like, I'll have to, like, look around it. Refresh your, refresh yourself on the yeah, site. refresh my, refresh myself. Okay. Very is good. it like a forum? Like you yeah, it's like write a forum. And I think this okay. is a hot topic to me. Because it's just, yeah, it is no, coming I think up. it's a hot topic too. It's like, right. you know, you know yeah. what though? I, I find like the one thing, um, I think I learned it on this podcast where I think it, Melissa said it, um, where it's just like, it's not your time. So every time it happens, I'm like, okay, it's not my time. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> you know, it's true. That. And what's Melina yeah. said once on our, what's meant, what is it? What's meant for you won't pass you by. Mm-hmm. So sure, yeah, sure. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The time will And it come. won't be hard. It'll be easy. Yeah. Yes. You know, organic and easy. Definitely. Yeah. Well, like if you're confused, then it's a no. 
That's or funny. like, what, what was that other thing? It was like, it's not a hell yes, it's a no. That's yes. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. Melissa Absolutely. And I just had this conversation yeah. before you got on. We were talking while we were waiting since Heather was late for the interview. Um, <laughs> since no. we sent her the wrong. You didn't send me a link. I'm like, let's um... just let Heather be late for the interview. <laughs> <laughs> not that the email address um, was wrong. But we were talking yeah. about how, um, if somebody doesn't like, let's say you throw out an idea to do something and they don't immediately be like, yeah, that sounds good. Like, let's get that booked. Then to me, that's a no. no. They're not interested. If they're interested, they're going to jump on it. I've had that happen too. Yeah. Same. We all Or like they, or they say yes. And I'm like, are you sure you seem hesitant? And they're like, yeah, they're great. (laughs) And then later on, they're like, no. I'm like, well, you couldn't like tell me that yesterday. There's my thing is my waste of time. Like, why are you, but like, it's, you know, it's fine. It's a good experience, but you know, just be honest. What's with the honesty thing too, guys? I think it's yeah. that could be so a whole hard. other thing. Yes, 100%. Radical. We'll have to have you back on. I know. Let's have yeah. another episode and we're going to do Radical Candor. I read this book. It's fascinating, but it's literally oh. about being completely honest about what's really happening. Yeah. And it's it's a kindness you give people, truly. It is. So, And you don't have to <laughs> I mean, say it in a mean to, way. Yeah. It can be just really right. like radically honest. All right. Well, you guys are amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. I yes, know you were, thank you, Heather. I know you were not looking thank forward to this. <laughs> you did it. You did it. I was it. nervous. I did it. Want to support the Lesbian Chronicles podcast? Rate us and write a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. We love listener feedback. If you'd like to share your story, email us at melissaandally at gmail.com. That's Melissa, M-E-L-I-S-A, and Allie, A-L-L-I, at gmail.com. Or follow us on Instagram at Lesbian Chronicles.